Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0. And today is day 42. So today we're continuing our training of the designs applet. And so far we have covered social designs. We have covered print designs. Today we're actually going to dive into the video component of the designs applet and make a neighborhood marketing video and then edit it. So let's go into designs once again by clicking on our paintbrush icon here. And we are going to create a new design, same way that we did for our social and print assets. And we're going to choose this time the video component and then click on continue. So the first thing that command asks you to do is select a neighborhood that you want to feature for this marketing video. Now these neighborhoods are based upon the next door neighborhoods, which we obviously partnered with. We talked a lot about that during smart plans and the monthly neighborhood nurture. Um, don't fret too much though. If you're looking to create a video for an area that is not a next door neighborhood, I'll let you know that you actually have the ability to change this neighborhood name and all the data attached to it once selected. So if you don't have a neighborhood name, feel free to use Falls at Green Meadows, which is actually my neighborhood. And you can see that pulls up inside of Katy, Texas. So we're gonna go ahead and select that neighborhood and then click on next. And you will then see you have the ability to change the name. So if you couldn't find your neighborhood and you wanted to use your neighborhood for this video asset, just choose any neighborhood, like I said, and then come in and actually change the name. The data that's going to be included inside of this uh, video, and it's a little cartoonish, right? You'll see the actual produced product here in a second, is the average home price, price per square foot, and total number of homes for sale, and then the average days on market, along with what's happening with home prices. Are they on the rise, decline, or holding steady? And then the same with the price per square foot. In addition, you're gonna be able to select up to three neighborhood features. And then from there, you will uh, verify your agent information being pulled from your marketing profile. And of course, your market center brokerage information as well. So for me, in order to do this for me, just to make sure that this data is accurate, I always verify it against my actual MLS data. So what I have done in Houston, we have access to Matrix as our MLS. Um, I went through and pulled the data for the last three months in my neighborhood. So this is what we call a quick CMA. So you can see that this data, uh, actually this is the last three months, I apologize. So the last three months here, here's the data inside of my neighborhood. So I, I can get an idea of what the average sold price is. You can see that that average is 530,000, what the average sold price per square foot is as well. If you're not familiar with how to pull a CMA or comparative market analysis within your market particular uh, from the MLS, get with your market center tech trainer or market center leadership. They can certainly tell you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back into command and adjust that sold price based upon the data that I have. So this is easily customizable, as you can see. I'm gonna change that to 530,000 based upon my data. And then I'm gonna look at the actual price per square foot. So over the last 90 days, the average sold price per square foot in my neighborhood is 158.26. So we will change that information out as well. Next up, it's gonna say, hey, are these prices increasing, decreasing, or holding steady? So how do I check that? Well, this is the CMA I pulled for the last 90 days. Then what I did is I just changed the dates on the CMA and I did the 90 days prior to that. So essentially we're looking at September through December here. And then this is actually going to be July or excuse me, June, July, August. Yeah, uh, what's the date up here? I apologize, June through September, right? So you can see the dates here, June 19th through September 18th. And then we did September 19th through December 19th. So three months and then the three months prior to that. And then let's compare them. So average sold price 575 for the three months prior to these three months. The most recent price 530. That tells me that the price is going down. Let's look at the price per square foot 167 as you can see right here 167 as compared to 158. So both of those numbers are decreasing. So I'm gonna say that they are on the decline and then once again on the decline. Next up, I can also see from that CMA what the average days on market was. 
So here inside of Matrix, you can see that uh, 14 listings sold between September and December, and the average days on market was actually 31 days. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust those numbers. I didn't put 66 in there, it automatically fed that. So for those of you that have conspiracy theories about 66, that was pulled by uh, Keller Williams and the data they have. Uh, finally, I want to look inside of Matrix and find out how many active listings I have in the falls at Green Meadows. And you can see there are actually 12 active listings. So I'm gonna go in and change that number. Now, some of you may be wondering why these numbers are a little bit uh, inaccurate or off. For my next door neighborhood, just as a heads up, it only includes currently the front half of our neighborhood. The back half is all new construction. Next door as a system hasn't quite caught up with the back of our neighborhood. So it's just pulling in data that represents just the front half. That's why these numbers may be a little bit off. As far as the neighborhood features go, you can see that you have an entire list of neighborhood features that you could select. And so you can go in and actually change what those may be. Um, neighborhood information, excuse me. So I'm gonna take out historic. We don't have a lot of historic information here, but we do have a lot of dog lovers. I see a lot of people walking their dogs. So I would just change that to dog lovers. All this is going to do is it's going to provide you with a couple of animations on the video. Don't overthink this too much, right? So you can go through and create a video and then change it, create another video and see what happens. Uh, but it's a very small portion of the marketing video. Next up, you just wanna verify your agent information. So this is our demo account. So that's why it has a headshot of our Market Center logo, but hopefully this would actually be your uh, headshot, your first and last name, your job title, your email, and then your phone number. So you can see that information there. And then you want to make sure that we confirm the Market Center brokerage information. So in this case, here's the Market Center's logo. And then you can also enter in your agent license number, brokerage license number, and the ownership statement. When I click on next, essentially it's going to start generating the video. It's that quick. So pretty short, straight, simple, to the point way to go in and change the name of the neighborhood or area. Guys, you might say, you know, North Katy or, uh, you know, a, a particular geographic boundary or something along those lines, north of I-10, uh, you know, south of 290 or something like that. Uh, once you've got that video input put in, you can see that if we click on play, it's gonna go ahead and play that video. You can see that's the date that we just put in. December 19th is today's date. This is the average sales price and that they're on the decline there, if you saw at the bottom. There's the average price per square foot and that they're on a decline, which is information we put in. Here's how many homes are for sale, a data point we put in as well. And then finally, the average days on market, which we entered as well. This portion about what locals had to say, this is where those three neighborhood aspects come in. So you can see that those are added in, the animations are a little interesting, uh, but you can change those at any point and recreate this video. Then you're gonna see it's a little highlight for the KW app. And then finally, your branding and marketing information there at the very end. And that's it, that's the entire video. So one minute, set to music, ready to go. I can click on save and you can now see that this video is available inside of my designs library. So if I wanna use this on a separate campaign, obviously I can easily do that. I also have the ability to click on the three dots and choose to download this video if I want to upload this somewhere else. So you've got a couple of uh, opportunities here to download the video itself to use it in campaigns, to share on social, which will uh, connect to the social campaigns, and you can do your business pages there, your Facebook business page, which we kind of talked about a couple days ago. And then of course you can rename the file, make a copy or delete. So that's it for today, guys. The uh, video component of the designs applet and the ability to create and then edit a short marketing video for a specific neighborhood or area. Get in there, play with that. You might post that on your Facebook personal page, your Facebook business page, perhaps if you're a member of the actual community that you're doing the marketing for, you could post a video there and then you could do regular updates. So just a few ideas of where you might post that sort of content. Tomorrow we're going to dive into email design. So stay tuned for that. As always, it's a pleasure talking to you and look forward to talking to you again real soon.